We return now to the subject of child sexual abuse in the Catholic Church in the extensive, disturbing grand jury report made public in Pennsylvania this week. While past investigations have focused on the actions of individual priests, this probe also looked closely at how much church hierarchy, the bishops, knew about that behavior and to what lengths they went to cover it up. Among other findings, the report concluded priests were raping little boys and girls, and the men of God who were responsible for them not only did nothing, they hid it all. Of the six Pennsylvania bishops whose dioceses are covered in the investigation, only one agreed to testify in person before the grand jury, Lawrence Persico of the Diocese of Erie, and he joins me now via Skype. Bishop Persico, thank you very much for talking with us. These are such devastating findings. How seriously is the church taking them? We're taking them very seriously because we realized after the report came out how bad things were. Meaning that you and others were not aware of the depth of the problem before this? We weren't aware throughout the whole state of how bad things were. Uh, obviously, we, I knew some of the situation in the Diocese of Erie since I've only been here six years. But when you see it all together, then you can see how bad it is. Well, as we, as we just said a moment ago, uh, this is a report that focuses, uh, yes, on the actions of individual priests, but it also focuses on the actions of the leadership, the bishops, uh, and, and paints a disturbing picture of the inaction of bishops, actively uh, either ignoring or, uh, or doing nothing uh, about, about charges, claims that were brought to them. That's true. There was a failure of leadership. That definitely is pointed out in that report, that many bishops did not handle them well. And why do you think that was? Well, that's a good question. I don't understand myself what they were doing, but I think because they were trying to protect the institution, and they were more concerned about that than about dealing with this with law enforcement as we would do today. And how do you explain that? When you think about the, uh, the vow that uh, a priest takes, leaders of the church take, um, what, they're, what they are devoting their lives to, to put an institution ahead of human beings, how do, how, do, how do you explain that? There's no explanation for it. It's regrettable. But unfortunately, that's what happened in the past. And we, as the leaders today, must demonstrate we cannot have that anymore. Moving forward, there has to be a resolution to handle this correctly. Well, you were singled out for praise by the Pennsylvania State Attorney General, Josh Shapiro, because you were, as we said, the only one of the six uh, bishop, bishops whose dioceses were being investigated here uh, to show up in person to testify before the grand jury. At the same time, you've been accused by a former priest uh, in Erie, uh, a man named James Belujak, of ignoring his story when he came to you. He said had several conversations with you about his own abuse by another priest when he was a teenager. How have you responded to that? Well, um, this is the first time I've heard that. Uh, I don't remember the multiple conversations. He did speak to me once about it. And um, there were other issues going on with uh, Jim, and I was trying to address the, those issues. He had informed me that he had reported the abuse that he received from Monsignor Martin uh, prior to my arrival. So uh, I thought that it was dealt with and I was more concerned about the fragile state that he was in at the time um, when we were talking. Have you or do you plan to take steps to talk to him further? Well, quite frankly, when he left the diocese, I had reached out to him a number of times, written him letters, called him, but there were no return calls. Certainly, if, I, if he wants to reach out or speak to me, I'll be more than happy to. 
You, Bishop Persico, have focused in your statements, I was just reading them again this afternoon uh, uh, on behalf of the diocese, um, on wanting transparency, as you just said, focusing on, on help for the victims. But my question is, is there enough focus on the people who are accused of, of making these, doing these terrible things to these children? Do you think there's enough focus on going after the perpetrators? Well, we do what we're able to do canonically, civilly. We can, you know, if if, if the crime is still act, if the they can, if they can be arrested by the authorities, that's fine. But I do take action by uh, canon law to remove them from ministry. They're not allowed to function, uh, present themselves as priest. Um, I'm not quite sure what more we could do outside of um, what the law enforcement, if they can do something there, that's about it. Well, what about, I mean, referring them for prosecution, and what about supporting what the state attorney general says he thinks should happen, and that is abolishing the, the statute of limitations so that no matter when abuse occurred, the perpetrator can be uh, prosecuted? Well, I think, again, that would have to be, I know what the challenges or the four proposals that the attorney general made. However, those proposals, we have to review them. We're in the process of reviewing them. Do you personally think there should be any limits on, uh, on the time on, on prosecuting individuals who are accused? I don't have a problem with criminal prosecution, no. I think that's fine. In fact, I wish we could. Just a final question, Bishop Persico. Do you believe that the Catholic Church needs to rethink its fundamental tenets when it comes to uh, young men who go into the priesthood, the celibacy uh, that is uh, part of that responsibility? Well, that's certainly, in a situation like this, that would raise the question. But um, just by way of example, here in the Diocese of Erie, we um, published a list of credibly accused clergy and laity. In the laity section, we have men and women who are teachers or working in some of our institutions. Now, some of them are married. So I don't know if you could say it's just because of celibacy that these men acted out, or even these women and laymen acted out. So I don't think we can just focus on celibacy. I think it's what kind of review we do when we bring candidates in to study in the seminary. It's an important subject, and I know we are going to continue to look at it. Bishop Lawrence Persico, thank you very much. You're welcome.